Welcome to the More Than OK podcast, a wellbeing and family podcast about tips, strategies and stories on how to be more than OK. My name is Belinda Bray. I'm a mum, a wife, a teacher and someone who's always trying to be more than OK. I love learning about wellness and wellbeing and I love bringing what I learn into my life, my family and my classroom. So I hope what I have for you today is helpful and inspires you to be more than OK. Welcome to another episode of More Than OK. Today we have got Bridget Jarvis in with us today. Hello, hello. And we are talking about how to run a business while also having a family. So Bridget, you are from a company called Poppy Poppy Lane Lane Designs, which has the most colourful things ever. (laughs) Just nice and subtle, you know. (laughs) Let's learn about you first. Right. (laughs) I forget about that. I just wanted to start the conversation, but I have to ask you some questions. Firstly, how do you have your coffee? Just white. I used to have two sugars and cut that out for Lent one year. Oh, okay. And now it's too sweet with the two sugars. So just white. (laughs) Cool. Favourite colour? Um, Pink. I was going to say, is it pink? Because I've been on your website, there's a lot of pink. It's pink, yes. It's pink. What is your dream Saturday night? Um, Well, it normally consists of some sort of a Disney movie with Uh, children. Um, But I would have to say probably a glass of wine and my sewing machine just kind of tinkering away. So, yeah, that's it. Oh, cool, you're a sewer. (laughs) Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Okay, Mm -hmm. so Poppy Lane sells earrings and accessories and art. Yes. What else do you do? What else do we do? Um, All sorts of things. So earrings are predominantly what we make. Um, That kind of accounts for the biggest part of our business is earrings. Um, Second to that is clutches. Uh, Um, So hand painted, we have a few women who paint all of our bags for us. Um, I try and paint when I get time, but there's not a lot of time for that anymore. Um, And they get painted on big sheets of canvas, sewn up and um, made into these little clutch bags. They're very beautiful. Thank you. They're very cool. Thank you. And I see that they get shipped all over Australia and all over the world. Yeah. So we now have over 80 um, active stockists. Um, uh, Most of them are in Australia and then there's a handful that are overseas as well, which is pretty exciting. Yeah. That's cool. I love that you're a mum doing this and you're in our little town Toowoomba doing this. I love Toowoomba. That's great. That's (laughs) good. All right. So I just did tell you that I've met your baby, but I've never met you. Uh, (laughs) I just randomly had someone holding a baby and I said, that's a cute baby. And they said, anyway, who else lives in your house? Um, So my husband, Ben, uh, he does fly in, fly out work. So he's away three weeks at a time. Wow. Um, Away for three weeks, then home for three weeks. Okay. So big pros and big cons to that kind of job. Like any job has pros and cons. Um, My daughter, Poppy, um, my second daughter, Mila, and my third daughter, Bonnie. And Bonnie's just new. <laughs> Thank you. How yeah, old she's, is she? Um, 10 weeks, wow. 11 weeks. Okay. I'm not sure. Something okay. like that. That's cool. <laughs> it was, it's all a bit of a blur. Yeah, it is a yeah. <laughs> So you have this really successful business in yes. Poppy Lane. Yes. How did it start? So um, I'll, try and, I'll try and give you the short yeah. answer. <laughs> um, so we were living in Toowoomba. Um, I had just had Poppy. She was a couple of months old. Um, we had a wedding hire business Um, that we rented out wedding hire furniture. Um, We were also in the middle of doing up a caravan to convert into a bar. Um, Then our lives kind of literally flipped upside down when um, my brother-in-law passed away in a gyrocopter accident. Um, Many of you guys that go to the school probably know my sister Kylie. Um, So she was pregnant with their fourth baby at the time of him dying. So little Charlie's now up at the um, early learning center. And Ben and I, it kind of just brought everything into perspective and we kind of decided we were going to move to Charleville, um, which is about eight or nine hours west of here, um, just to support Kylie however we could. Um, We didn't know what that would look like at the time um, and we just kind of, it just became all of a sudden very clear that we Mm. needed to do that. Um, So amongst conversations with just Ben and I, we hadn't told anyone yet, we were coming, we came to Highlands one night um, and a couple prayed for us at the front. We don't know who they are, still don't know who they are. Um, And they just kind of said amongst other really cool things, but they said, you're about to make sacrifices and doors are going to open you never thought would open. Wow. Yeah. And, oh, I got goosebumps. Yeah, and somebody, like, we, like, I literally, my first baby was in my arms. She was, like, three months old. A lady came and took her out of my arms. I still don't know even who that was. <laughs> and it was all just this really surreal moment. Um, 
And yeah, I don't know who the couple were. I wish I did. It was an elderly couple who prayed over us. Anyway, they said this and prophesied a few other things over our lives, which we're still kind of seeing unraveling. Um, and But the main one was doors would open, you didn't think would open. So we're like, okay, yep, we're going to move. So we packed up our lives quite literally, sold the wedding hire business, um, and off we went. Wow. Um, we had no money, like zero money. I remember distinct, distinctively having $50 left in our bank account at one wow. point. Um, we were flat out affording the fuel just to get to Charleville, wow. not to mention putting a house on the rental market. Yeah. Um, you know, all the costs that come involved with moving. And we gave our last of what we had, we tithed it. Um, and so we were like, we have literally nothing left to lose. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, and we moved to Chalable, um, and we seriously doors opened after one after the other. And, and Poppy Lane was one of those doors that opened. Um, it started with a little boutique in Chalable. The lady knew I was a bit crafty and made random things and liked to tinker away on my sewing machine and whatever. And she said, oh, I'd love you to make me some macrame for my shop. Okay. Um, it was terrible macrame. I'm not good at it. <laughs> Don't ever ask me to make macrame. But anyway, so it started with that, um, which turned into clutches, which turned into earrings. I made the first pair of tassels for our earrings um, while watching friends ski out of the river out there. Wow. And everyone laughed at me and said, you're an idiot. Why are you making tassels? You should be skiing. And I'm like, nope, this is what I want to do. And anyway, here we are. <laughs> that's so great. Yeah, that's how it started. I love that. I've Joe. been looking at your website and Instagram. And yes. it seems as if family is really important to you. So how does family fit in with this business that you have? Absolutely. I would be lost without them, quite literally. Um, so my husband, Ben, is my silent biggest fan. He also <laughs> keeps me very grounded. Oh, that's good. Um, very much so. Um, so, yeah, obviously it wouldn't be possible without his support. When, when he's home, he's absolutely so hands-on that wow. it allows that's me, good. releases me a little bit too physically do some work. Yep. Um, my dad does all of our books and bookkeeping oh, and cool. um, account management and so many things mm. I probably don't even know about him doing. <laughs> um, so I would be absolutely lost without him. And Kylie, my sister, is now employed full-time by Poppy Lane and Paints. Wow. Um, she's one of the women that, yeah, we That's contract. So cool. Yeah, so, and the kids are literally every package that goes out, my kids have decorated with stickers or Aww. folded the boxes. I pay my nieces and nephews to fold boxes and cut bubble wrap. And wow. so, yeah, it's literally all hands on deck. <laughs> what does an average day look like for you? Um, they look very different, whether Ben's home or away. Oh, yes, um, so when he's away, I mean, when he's home, it's wonderful because I can sleep in and he's got the girls off and to school <laughs> before I even wake up some mornings. But when he's away, I usually start the day off on the wrong foot. And this is something I don't advise doing is staying up so late the night before. Oh, I do that. It's terrible, hey? Yeah. Um, so I usually get dragged out of bed by the two-year-old is usually the one that's, you know, mum, wake up, I don't want to milk. Um, so I head straight to the kettle. <laughs> um, and and Bonnie, our baby, she doesn't really like to be put down much before um, lunchtime. That's just her thing that she yeah, does. Okay. So I kind of start the one-handed juggle. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if they're heading, so they go to school two days a week, okay. two or three days a week up here at Highlands. Um, and it's packing lunches and getting them out the door and juggling a baby in yeah. one hand and yeah. often feeding the baby in this hand while I'm doing it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I might get a couple of hours during the day to, to work um, from home. And um, then it's back to get the kids and yeah, trying to survive until bedtime. So yeah, okay. So you've talked about your family and your newborn baby. Yep. What? Why is it important to keep running this business even while you've got such small children? Yeah. Um. Good question. <laughs> good question. Full stop. Yeah. Some days. Some days I really wish I didn't have to. To be honest, um, there is days where. When you have your own business, you can't call in sick. Yep. And um, I mean, it's just like being a mum. You, you, you can't just tap out. That's right. Um, and it's the same, I guess, with this business. And as much as there's days that I would love to just be a mum and, and be in the garden and, you know, be baking and doing all the mum yep. things, um, I truly believe God has blessed this business so we can be a blessing. I, I fully believe that, you know, he blesses to bless. So, yeah. um, and this little business is beyond blessed um, and opportunities have come its way that you know are, are not um, are not in my doing um, and nine local women are now contracted to the business yeah. um, half of which 
Poppy Lane is their only income. Mm. Um, so I can't just stop, no. you know, the show must goes on, um, show must go on whether we're, whether we're juggling babies or not. Yeah. Um, after having Miller, our, our middle girl, um, six hours after giving birth, I was back on the sewing machine. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so it's just because it's Christmas. I don't time having my babies well at all. Um, but it was Christmas and we had orders and you just have to fill it. Yeah. And then there's other days because I do work for myself that I can just flop in a heap and go, I'm going to the shops today. You know, yeah. this can all wait. So yeah. there's pros and cons to any kind of job that you have. Yeah. But yeah, show must go on. <laughs> yes. Yes. There's no signing off from motherhood when your babies are tiny. No. Yeah. There just isn't. Yeah. It gets better. Yes. I, great. Good. I'm looking it really to does. I watched your you and Michael's interview oh, and okay. how Michael said, I'm starting to see the investment with our children. I was like, I can't wait yes. for that moment. Pancakes and coffee. Yeah. That's when I you know you've wait. arrived. I can't wait, yeah. I mean, I've got Poppy down to a fine art of folding boxes. So oh, that's cool. somewhat helpful at yeah. five years old. But um, good. yes, I'm looking forward to the, the making the coffee part. I'm about to ask you a question that if somebody asked me, I'd get really antsy. antsy. <laughs> yes. But do you believe in work-life balance? I do believe it exists. <laughs> Have I figured it out? Yeah, no, yeah. not yet. Um, but every day is different. And every day, some days I literally feel like I'm superwoman and I'm like, come on, bring it at me. Like I can yeah. do this. Other days I'm failing at everything and I'm a big hot mess. Yeah. <laughs> um, so is there a balance? Yes. But I think that looks different every day. Yeah. Um, and some days I'm, you know, a fun mum and all I do is play but my business suffers yeah. and other days the business is amazing and I'm kicking goals there but I feel like a guilty mum because I haven't you know actively sat yeah. with the kids or something so I think it's all just about juggling and yeah. trying to do the best you can with what you've got yeah yeah so I read an article a few years ago and it's about this idea of tilting right so instead of thinking of balance you kind of tilt into different things yeah that's good and I that has helped me because I work full-time yep uh, my husband works full-time we have three kids yeah they all do extracurricular and yep. when it all when you write it all down it gets scary yeah but just having this idea that I'm tilting into teaching now yeah, so I go that's into teaching good. I like that. And then in the afternoon, I can tilt back into, into being, being a mum. Yeah, that's good. And that's good. actually really helped me because there is no work balance. No, yes. I'm a teacher. I could give all of my time to lesson prep and marking and getting in touch with kids. Then your kids suffer. But then my family yeah. suffers. So I yeah. totally hear yeah. what you're saying there. It's it's tricky being a mum and trying to work and trying yep. to make that impact yeah. in the world. That's really, I really like that. I'm going to yeah. keep that. You may keep <laughs> I'll that. write that on my mirror. Tilting. Tilting, yes. <laughs> I like because that. I'm not sure if, I'm not sure if we're built to balance. No, I think that's, that's true. And just, and just being okay with, um, I can't say the word, but com, what's the, compartmentalizing Compart yes is that the that's word? it good yay <laughs> um that when i'm mum i'm mum and not yeah. thinking because otherwise i could be present like physically present but not mentally present yeah um, which i may as well not be sitting on the couch exactly. you know and there is some things i do you know i i try to save my fun earring making jobs to sit outside with the kids and do them while they're in the sandpit or something yeah. um but yeah just trying to be present when when i'm with them um, yeah Otherwise, yeah, like you said, you could just fill all your time with work and then yeah. it's, yeah. Yeah, that's good. So I've given you some homework. Yes. <laughs> I've asked you to give us three tips for people who might want to start a creative business mm -hmm. while they have a family. Yes. Well, firstly, that's very exciting. <laughs> um, and my first bit of advice is go for it. Um, just start is, is pretty much my tip number one, just start. Um, I think we can all come up with a multitude of excuses, reasons, oh, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough money, the kids are too busy, whatever, whatever. Um, but if you don't physically start small with what you have, um, whatever that looks like in your field, um, a year's time, you will be nowhere you more than... I feel than... like you're talking to oh. me. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. But I always get messages from mums on Instagram, or from women, doesn't matter if you're a mum or not, because, um, you know, you could have higher work demands or, mm. or something, um, that if you don't physically start with something, then you're never going to get anywhere. Yeah. Um, so I always, like, looking back on my first few Instagram posts, as an example, I cringe. I'm like, ooh. But if I hadn't <laughs> have posted them, That's true. I wouldn't have gotten that one follower, which led to two followers, yeah. you know, and, it, and, and so it goes on. Um, social media, I think, is an amazing place to start. Just get your ideas, get your product, get your business onto a social media platform. It is free yeah. and ridiculous if you're not using it. So. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Okay. Instagram, I wouldn't have a business without Instagram. That's great. Um, I don't work for Instagram to plug that, but I, yeah, yeah, I literally have Instagram to thank for a huge part of my business. Yeah. Um, so that's my advice. Start with what you have. And right. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So tip number two. Yes. Um, tip number two would be don't compare yourself to Ooh. others. Okay. Um, it's really easy, especially with how, um, I don't know how much we have at our fingertips now. I know I keep harping on about social media, but with what we see, um, that to kind of look sideways at what other people are doing in your own field, or even not in your field, even if you just go, oh, look at them succeeding. Um, no, nobody has it together. Mm. I think we just touched on it that I have no ducks in a row whatsoever. <laughs> um, so I think if you kid yourself that the ducks need to be in a row to start, then you're never going to start. Yeah. Um, so my, yeah, my biggest thing, and I've been guilty at it sometimes, is kind of going, oh, they're copying me, or you know, they're doing better at this that I would mm. love to do. Or So don't compare yourself, I think, to others, because it is literally only going to hinder you and yeah. hurt you um, if you keep looking sideways at what others are doing. It's just going to slow and stint your own race down. Okay. So that's tip number two that's would be great. don't compare yourself. Tip number three. <clears throat> Okay, tip number three would be treat every customer as if they were your most valued. Wow. Um, I just really feel that, um, you know, treating each customer with kindness takes you a long way in business. And I've even seen that in such a short time of being in mm. business. Um, even the customer that's buying the $5 sale item, wrap it with the same amount of love, um, pour the same amount of packaging love into yeah. it, give them the same experience yeah. as the opening, um, things like that. And that's something I'm still learning as I go. Yeah. Um, when we get hit with a huge amount of orders all at once, I'm very guilty of just quickly, you know, wrap, 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 and get them all out like a production line. Um, for a while there, and something I should probably do again is I've kind of prayed over every order. Oh, great. Um, I didn't vocalize that, you know, to, to my customers, but just, you know, did a little thank you so much for this order and, you yeah. know, um, a handwritten note in every order. So, yeah, that, that's what that looks like for my business. Um, but treat every customer with utmost respect because I think kindness kindness takes you a long way yes. in business and generosity so yeah, yeah that's, that's so my last tip great thank you <laughs> thank you so much for my coming pleasure. on thank it's been for great asking. thanks for joining us for another episode of more than okay i hope you've learnt something about so. life and business and family yeah. through this podcast and we look forward to seeing you in more episodes